for me, seeing an ATG squat done with perfection is a beautiful thing. I don't think there's any other human movement that makes me go, wow, more than an ATG squat in a narrow stance position. That, to me, this is just beauty. When I see some of these Olympic weight lifters, you know, catch their snatches in like this unbelievable ATG position, I always go like, why is that so beautiful for me? It's beautiful because they're able to have full range of motion. Like some of these guys, man, their butt's touching the ground. So full range of motion, and they have this stupid amount of weight in their hand above. So it's like an expression of like these two extremes, which usually you don't see in everyday life. You know, very, very strong people mixed with very, very flexible mobile people. Those two things, it's like having a race car, you know, a track car that's comfortable. It's like you don't get these two things mixed ever. But that's what Olympic weightlifting is. You have this like range of motion, strength. And obviously, there's other qualities like speed as well and technique. But these two things for me are like the most beautiful thing. And kind of what drew me into trying to ATG squat, trying to get stronger in these end ranges. So I'm quite comfortable, you know, getting an ATG position in a kind of narrow you know, even closer than sh shoulder width kind of position. For me, that's kind of the comfort. And I don't think it's been a comfort for me because I was born that way. It's just because I idolized some of these guys which, you know, did the narrow stands really well. And so I try to emulate them. And here I am, freaking eight years later, trying to do that. But it does have a toll on my body. You know, I'll, I'll be frank with you. When I do ATG, you know, heaps of volume, in that narrow stance, for whatever reason, you know, my body has kind of developed these spot fires over the years. And, you know, right hip pain is something that I've said a billion times to you guys. And, you know, it keeps coming back whenever I dump in a lot of volume, you know, a lot of high bar ATG squat volume. But whenever I've done wide stance squats, basically to parallel, it's almost like my hips are unwinding themselves. It's almost like I'm going from that really tight position, which calls for that narrow stance, squat. I feel like I'm unwinding. It's almost like I'm stretching out my hips. I don't know whether I'm supposed to be doing this as a default type of squat, or it's just simply a different range of motion, different stance, and I'm just targeting other, maybe weak structures of my hips, of my legs, which is simply under-trained because I'm, I've, I've been doing narrow stance for such a long time. Today, I decided, okay, let's do this wide stance squat. I've been doing it a little, a little while now. Um, and I've been stretching a whole lot, you know, off the screen, basically, you know, in between sessions or whatever. Basically, just trying to stretch my groin, you know, the hip flexors, all that. So today, I thought, okay, the, the soreness of my adductors are, you know, getting better and better. And I thought, okay, let me try and get as deep as possible in a wide stance position. And so that's what I did today. I tried to get as low as I could in, in some of these sets, really stretching that whole groin, adductor, hip flexor region. And my God, does it feel good to me. Just feels like I'm hitting the nail on the head when it comes to what my body needs right now. You know, I'm a narrow stance ATG squatter. Doing wide stance, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's, it's just, I can't really explain it. You know, some of you guys have said to me that you squat, you know, first of all, what I'm calling wide for a lot of you guys is just normal stance. And so when you guys do a narrow or my normal stance, you guys, you know, say that you develop like a good stretching feeling it's like a, an accessory movement which kind of surprises the body and, and kind of engages other structures. Maybe this is just a function of you're doing something that you're not usually doing. And so you're, you're kind of stretching certain structures, strengthening certain structures when you change it up. Um, just feels freaking good, man. Feels really good. Like I said in previous videos, I think I'm going to come in every single day now and just warm up with this thing. It's so freaking easy to just walk up to the bar, pick it up, going to a wide stance, going to a squat. There's like no requirement. It's so easy for me. However, it's easy for me to get at a parallel, but going beyond, I feel like there's all sorts of forces happening in the hips. I feel like there's an internal hip rotation below 90 degrees. So I feel like my, my, my femurs are internally rotating past that while I'm trying to abduct the hip at the same time. Is abduction the correct term here? 
Or is it external rotation? Because I want to keep my knees out while I'm going below 90 degrees. So I feel like, I feel like there's internal rotation here with, uh, I want to say abduction. It has to be abduction because you can't have internal rotation with external rotation at the same time. If that was the case, nothing would happen. So I think it's internal hip rotation with hip abduction. Um, just feels freaking good, man. Because, you know, when you, when you are squatting uh, narrow stance ATG, because you're so narrow, the, the knees want to fall apart because they can't go any in any further, even if they wanted to. You can't have knee valgus with a narrow stance. You, you just can't. There's no, there's no space. So you're kind of spilling water to the side because of this narrow stance. But when you go wide stance, because the way it is and because you're limiting of, 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 of mobility, you can't go further anymore. Right? The forces are going inwards. So you want to spill in. So then all of a sudden you are trying to engage the muscles which are sending the knees out. So see how it's like completely reversed? You know, in narrow, you know, the knees by default want to go out. So you're kind of dragging them in to kind of keep them tracking over the toes. With wide, it's the opposite. The knees want to come in, so you're pushing them out. So I think that whole pushing out business, hip abduction, I'm hitting glute med, probably hitting TFL. I'm stretching all sorts of things, and I'm stretching the adductors, which will otherwise be in a really, really tight position in the narrow. So it's like, like I said before, it's like a breath of fresh air. Um, you know, I just started thinking to myself, my God, like, if, I, if I'm going to teach my wife right now to, you know, start squatting ATG with flat shoes, um, maybe that's the best thing to tell her. Just freaking go as wide as you can, right? Go a really wide stance and try and squat as deep as you can. Because with the wide stance, you're not going to be hitting any limitations with the, with the dorsiflexion because you are, I don't know what the terminology is, but you're basically borrowing or let's say you are reducing the length of your femur by going sideways, right? Because you are going wider stands, your femur is almost like getting deleted. If you're looking for somebody from the profile, from the side view, and they are squatting in a very, very narrow position, very narrow stance, and you, you watch them from the side, they look like they have really long femurs, right? And all of a sudden, there's a lot of leaning forward. But if that same person just widens the hell out of their stance, and you're still watching them from the side, all of a sudden, it, they look from the side like they have much smaller femurs. And so there's a lot of a lot more ver verticality, and it seems like a lot more comfortable position for at least for the verticality of the squat and, and, and for the aesthetics from the from the profile from the side view. And I keep thinking to myself, okay, if you do the wide stance and get your hips strong through the wide stance squatting, later on then maybe you can start addressing the ankle, you know, uh, uh, side of it and. At least you, you've knocked out the hip portion of it completely with the wide stance. And then when you go to the narrow stance, all you really got to worry about is the is the ankles. But if you just go straight for the narrow, you've got ankle trouble and hip trouble at the same time. It seems like you just hit two roadblocks and you can't go nowhere. So maybe this is a really good way to kind of teach somebody mobility is just go wide. Just go wide. I'm not talking about going wide as some of the freaking West Side you know, people did. West Side Barbell. But, you know, shoulder width out, maybe like another, I don't know, half a foot or something, I don't know, uh, away from shoulder width, or maybe just out shoulder width, something like that. You know, I mean, for me, when I put my, you know, feet out, shoulder, just out shoulder width, it feels like it's really wide. Like, I feel like there's a whole lot of tension happening in the adductors, and anyway, it, it feels whack. Um, but the, the sensation that I have, simply by doing, what did I do today? Five sets of 10 with the barbell. Then I did five sets of 10 with 60 kilos. By the time I did that, I felt like I was so free in the hip flexors and the adductors. It was just, I don't know if there's any other stretch that you could prepare yourself to squat that is better than just simply going wide stand squats. Even if you are not a wide stand squatter, just do it. It would open up all of the, the structures which you need to be open, even for the narrow. But you just kind of, when you go back to the narrow, you feel like you have so much room to play with. It feels comfortable. It feels really comfortable. Um, today, you know, after I did all of that, I, I went to the front squat. And I, uh, I worked up to 170 today. So better than yesterday, the day before. Um, and I think my front squat stance now is also going wider. 
because I'm exploring these wide stances, all of a sudden, my narrow front squat seems like it's too narrow. Like I want to go a little wider, simply because I, 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 you know, you know, warmed up with the with the wide stance, um, and I feel like I have more range to play with. And now the scale between narrow and, and, and wide stance is a lot bigger. Like I've added a lot more length to my hip flexors, adductors. And all of a sudden, my narrow, narrow seems like it's too narrow. I can go a little bit further out. Um, you know, the front squat is a, is a, it's almost like a, how should I say? It's like a, a game of training, trading rather, trading. In the sense that the more wider you go, the more vertical you're going to stay. Simply like, you know, like I said before, you're deleting your femur. Essentially, you are, you are kind of, um, getting away with a lot more, you know, uh, so you can kind of go wider, automatically it's going to make you more vertical, the more vertical squat, as we know, is going to place a lot less tension on the upper back, and all of a sudden, you're going to have less upper back trouble, and more, more leg emphasis, at least that's what I'm feeling right now, when I go wide, I feel like it's a whole lot more quads in the front squat, because I'm more vertical, and I, I'm having trouble engaging the, the strong stuff on me, which I feel like are the glutes, the posterior chain. So it's kind of exposing me in a way for the legs. However, I'm having an easier time with the upper body. So it's kind of like, you know, pick your poison. What do you want to, what do you want to use? Do you want to use your quads or do you want to use your upper back and glutes? Um, I think I have strength in the wide stance position. I just don't have, I don't know if, I, if, if the word is stability, um, I don't know. I'm going to go back now, and now I've kind of remember, uh, reminded myself. I'm going to go back and look at the 182 and a half kilo uh, front squat that I did and the few 180s that I did, and I'm going to see what sort of stance I used then. I feel like it was really, really narrow. Um, it must have been really, really narrow. Uh, but if I can, this is the thing. If I want to squat 190, 200 front squat, there's going to become a time where I'm not going to have enough upper back strength to hold that much weight so you know it's probably my best interest to trade some of that you know leaning forward business you know and, and, and employ more quads just to stay up more vertical man um something to think about because you know es essentially what we're dealing with here is a bunch of forces and some forces are double the tax than others you know the front squad has to be vertical if, if you're not vertical then you are you're fighting a battle which you don't need to fight. Like the upper back does not need to be freaking copping it that sweetly, man. Like you should be more vertical and go up and st straight up and down. And if I could do that narrow, I freaking would, but I can't. Anyway, the wide stand squats, man. Try it. Try it. ATG. Obviously, don't use a lot of weight. The last thing you want to do is freaking pop a hip out. Um, I'm not sure if if wide stance ATG squats are healthy for the hip joint or not. But right now, it's a really nice stretch with light weight. Um, Try it out, you know, try it out and see when you go back to the normal squatting stance, it just bloody feels better, at least to me it does. All right, guys, appreciate all of you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.